Octoprint status. Mm -hmm. Operational, not printing. Octoprint start. Yes, Lord Hacker, job started. Octoprint status. Dear Lord Hacker, I am printing. I have printed for zero seconds, and printing time left is 18 hours, 45 minutes. Octoprint toggle job. Yes, Lord Hacker, job toggled. Octoprint cancel job. Yes, Lord Hacker, job canceled. Octoprint status. Canceling, not printing. In this video, I would like to introduce a project I wrote recently called Octoprint Assistant. It allows you to vocally control your 3D printer. Around a year ago, I bought my first 3D printer. The model is NDS3 Pro. It's easy to use, but whenever I need to transfer data to the printer, I have to use a SD card. And if the printing job failed, I have to transfer data using the SD card. That's very inconvenient for me. So I installed Octoprint on my Raspberry Pi and connected Raspberry Pi to the 3D printer to control it. Octoprint is a web interface that allows me to upload files and print a file from it. It also allows you to monitor the status of the printing job. For example, the printing time, the printing time left, the temperature of the nozzle and bed. If you install a camera, you can even watch it within the browser and create a time lapse. Until now, I could only control the 3D printer within my home because I don't have access to the web interface from public internet. Then I set a Pi VPN server on my Raspberry Pi, which allows me to connect back to my home network and access Octoprint with a local IP address. Then I could remotely control my 3D printer from outside of my home. But that's not enough for me. I want to vocally control my 3D printer. And that's why I made this project. I could vocally control my 3D printer with Siri and Octoprint Assistant. Octoprint has a REST API which allows you to retrieve the information of the current job, the files, the state of the printer. It also allows you to issue commands to control the 3D printer. For example, start a job, cancel a job, or pause a job. For example, Octoprint is not connected to the server for now. If I click connect, you can see this request. API connection, that's a web request, and it will connect Octoprint to the 3D printer. All the operations you can do on the web interface can be done with REST APIs. So this is an example. By sending a GET request to API slash job, you can get the job information in JSON format. The information I'm interested in is printing time, printing time left, and states of the job. Sending web requests to Octoprint server could control the 3D printer. Then why do we need Octoprint Assistant? The response returned from Octoprint server is in JSON format, which is not easy to read. And if Siri read the information to me, I wouldn't be able to understand it. Octoprint Assistant is simply an intermediate server that translates JSON format's response to human understandable language. This is a general idea or network topology of my setup. The Octoprint Assistant server is installed on my Raspberry Pi, and on the same Raspberry Pi, I have a NGX reverse proxy. The two services do not need to be installed on the same server. This is just what my setup looks like. Siri will send a web request to my home on port 4000 of my modem, the traffic will be forwarded to router on port 5000 and then forwarded to port 6000 of my server. The Nginx reverse proxy is listening on port 6000. When it see Octoprint Assistant in URL, it will forward the request to port 7000 of the server, which Octoprint Assistant is listening on. Once Octoprint Assistant received the request, it will send another request to Octoprint server to retrieve the required information or issue and command. Then Octoprint will send the JSON format response to Octoprint Assistant. Octoprint Assistant will parse the required information from the JSON response, translate it to a human understandable language, and send it back to Siri. And Siri will read it aloud to me. Using Octoprint's REST API requires application key. You can generate it within Octoprint settings, application keys. You just need to give it a name and click generate. You need to first verify that Octoprint server is working and the REST API is working. In Postman, I send a request to get the job status with API key generated in Octoprint, and I should get status code 200 and a JSON format response. The domain I'm using is octoprint.pc. That's the domain name I configured in my local DNS server. You may want to use the IP address of the server Octoprint is running on, and make sure you add X API key to the header. The X API key is just the application key generated within Octoprint setting. For example, here are the information we are interested in. We are interested in the file we are currently printing, the printing time, printing time left, and the state of the printer. I'll be using Docker to deploy Octoprint Assistant. There are two methods you can use. The first one is using Docker Container and Nginx running on the host. The second one is using Docker Compose. It's simpler. The difference between them is 
Docker Compose contains an nginx service, so if you do not have nginx installed on the host, you can use Docker Compose. And with Docker Compose, there are two ways to generate SSL certificates. You can generate it on host or generate it within container. I will talk about them later. By the way, you don't have to use a Docker for deployment. Octoprint Assistant is written in Django, so you can use the standard methods for Django deployment and set up SSL certificates with it if you want. Let's begin with the first method. I made the Docker image and uploaded it to Docker Hub. Most CPU architectures should be supported. Source code and detailed deployment instruction can be found in the GitHub repo. You will need to clone the repo first, cd into the folder, make a copy of the .env template, name it to .env. This file will contain the environment variables, and then you can run make deploy to start the Docker container. Here is an example of the .env file. Octoprint X API key is just an application key generated by Octoprint. Master name is what you want Siri to call you. Octoprint port is the port Octoprint is running on. Octoprint address is the domain or IP address of the server Octoprint is running on. Octoprint protocol should be HTTP. Application key is different from Octoprint X API key. This can be anything. It's like a password, but I prefer to generate this key with Octoprint. This API key is used for Octoprint Assistant. You need to add this API key in the header when you send a request to Octoprint Assistant server. This is a make file I wrote. Make deploy and make update are both using an update script. It will stop any currently running container, update the image, and restart the container. Build and buildx are for building Docker images. I may make updates to the files later. When you run update.sh, it will stop any currently running container first. Remove the container if there is any, update the image, and then restart the Docker container. You can specify the environment variable debug to be true to run the server in debug mode. In debug mode, all the environment variables will be printed out, and the Django server will give you more error messages. Given that Octoprint server is working, we can now test Octoprint Assistant. We will do that with Postman. This is the IP of my Raspberry Pi. I'm using port 7000. If you want to use another port, you can change the port here in update.sh. Don't forget to add the X API key. That's the API key in .env, not the application key for Octoprint. If Octoprint Assistant is working properly, you should get 200 as the status code, and the response looks like this. Octoprint Assistant is now set up, but you can only use this locally for now. To use it in public internet, you have to set up port forwarding. You will need to configure a domain name first, Set up port forwarding on your modem and router, and test port forwarding with a file server. So this is how I do it. I will start a Python file server on my server on port 6000 and make sure that I can access the file server with the domain name. I'm using Cloudflare as my DNS registrar. At the type A record, the IPv4 address is the IP address of your home. Turn proxy off if you do not want to use port 80 or port 43. Then set up port forwarding. Here are the web interfaces of my modem and router. If your router is running in bridge mode, you may not need to set up it in router. Internal host should be the IP address of the router. Internal port number is the port you want to forward the traffic to on the router, so it should be the same as the external port in router setting. External port number is the port you want to expose to the public internet, which is 4000. So in router setting, I will give it the name. The protocol should be TCP, and also TCP here because HTTP request is based on TCP. External port should correspond to the internal port on modem. Internal host is the IP of the server Octoprint Assistant is running on. Then I'm going to test port forwarding with a Python file server. On my Raspberry Pi, I will run HTTP server on port 6000 with Python 3. Then in a browser, I will try to access the domain on port 4000. It's 4000, not 6000, because 4000 is exposed on the modem. The traffic will be forwarded to port 6000, which the Python file server will be running on. And you should see a file list like this. Once the port forwarding is working, we can now set up Nginx server, which will serve as a reverse proxy. We are simply replacing the Python file server with an Nginx server. So remember, this is the first method. If you do not want to install Nginx or other dependencies on your server, you can go ahead to the second method, which uses Docker Compose. Nginx can be easily installed with apt. A default configuration file should be generated for you in size available folder. The file should look like this. The port should be 80 by default. I updated the port to 6000. When you access the root of the server, it will look for index.html within this folder and return the HTML file. After modifying the configuration file, 
you can run nginx t to test it and nginx s reload to reload the server. Refresh the page and you should see the welcome page of nginx. Next, I'm going to configure nginx to be the reverse proxy of Octoprint Assistant. In size available folder, I created another file that's the domain name of my home. You don't actually need to create a new file, you can simply edit the original default file in place. This configuration means any request to this domain name and port 6000 will be handled by this configuration. And if the URL contains Octoprint Assistant, the traffic will be forwarded to localhost 7000. That's where the Octoprint Assistant server is running on. It's localhost because Nginx and the Octoprint Assistant are running on the same server. If they're running on different servers, then you need to change this to the IP address of the server where Octoprint Assistant is running on. For any other URL, 404 not found will be returned. If you add a new file like what I did, don't forget to link the file to sites enable, otherwise the configuration won't be enabled. Now the setup is almost done. When you send a request to your home, it will first be forwarded to nginx reverse proxy. If the URL contains Octoprint Assistant, then it will be forwarded to the Octoprint Assistant server. Uh, this shouldn't be 8080, it should be 7000. Octoprint Assistant will communicate with Octoprint, get the response, translate it to human understandable language, and return it back to Siri. After testing the configuration and reloading Nginx, you can refresh the page and you should get 404 not found. And if you add Octoprint Assistant to the URL, you should get API key required. That's normal and expected. That's because the API key is not added, but it's not secure because you're using a HTTP request, which is very dangerous if you send requests in public internet. Here I send the request with the API key and capture the packet with Wireshark. From the payload of the packet, you can see the X API key. It's not encrypted. Someone else may be able to get your application key and control your 3D printer. The solution is HTTPS or SSL certificate. I'll be using CertBot to install SSL certificates. In the first method, I will install CertBot to the host. So you can go to this website. It will give you the instruction to install CertBot. For me, I used Other for software and PIP for system. CertBot can be installed with PIP. After installing CertBot, you can run this command to generate SSL certificate. Make sure you change the domain to your domain. After running this command, it will challenge you to deploy a DNS TXT record with the following name and value. So you can go to the DNS registrar, add a TXT record with the name and value given, then click enter. The certificates will be generated and saved in the pass. You will need to copy the pass and paste them in the configuration file like this. You will need to add SSL after the port name and the following two lines. Do not forget to test the configuration and reload Nginx. After reloading Nginx, if you refresh the page, you should get 400 bad requests because you're sending HTTP requests, but that's not handled. We do not have a HTTP server configuration for now. It's now changed to a HTTPS server configuration. So if you add HTTPS to the front, it should have a lock, which means it's secure, and you will get the proper response. You can also test with Postman. With HTTP requests, you will get Status code 400 bad request, and with HTTPS, you should get status code 200 and the correct response if you have the API key too. That's all for the first deployment method. The second method will be using Docker Compose. It's simpler. After modifying .env file, the nginx configuration file, and Docker Compose, you can just run Docker Compose up to start the server. There's not much modifications required, and I will talk about them one by one. This is the docker-compose.yml file. It contains two services. The first one is a reverse proxy. It's a Ubuntu image with nginx and certbot installed. 6001 is mapped to port 80. It's optional, and it's designed to test port forwarding when SSL certificate is not installed. You can comment it out once SSL certificate is installed and verified. Port 6000 is mapped to 443, and it's for HTTPS. Of course, you can change the port to anything you want but make sure the port forwarding is also configured the same way. Volumes is super important. In volumes, the default configuration file in the config folder will be mapped to sites available folder. And the let's encrypt folder is mapped to etc let's encrypt. Remember that the certificates generated is saved to this pass. 
there are two ways to generate SSL certificates. You can generate it on host. You can save it to this location and it will be shared with the container. The second way is to generate the SSL certificates within the container, which will be saved here. The certificates will also be shared with the host. Then, even if the containers is completely removed, the certificates will still be available here and ready to be used for the next time. The second service is Octoprint Assistant. It's using the same Docker image in the previous method, and the .env file is passed to it. This is the nginx configuration file in the config folder. There are two server configurations. The first one is for HTTP, which is running on port 80. The second one is for HTTPS running on port 443. The two lines of SSL certificate configuration are commented out because nginx won't start if the given pass does not exist yet. If you decide to generate the SSL certificates on your host, you can install certbot and run the same command. Make sure you update the domain name. After the certificates are generated within etc less encrypt, you can cd into the octoprint assistant folder and run this command to link the less encrypt certificates to the less encrypt folder inside the project folder so that the certificates can be shared with the container through the volume. The process of generating SSL certificate is exactly the same. I won't repeat it. Just add the DNS TXT record to your DNS registrar, click enter, and you will get the passes. Copy the passes, go back to the nginx configuration file in config folder, update the passes, update the server name, and uncomment the two lines. Then you need to shut down the previously started Docker containers and run Docker Compose up to start it again. Then test the containers locally with HTTP. This is the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, which is running the containers. Port 6001, because that's the port for HTTP, is mapped to port 80 of the nginx container. And make sure you get the correct response. Given that port forwarding on the modem and router is configured properly, you can test with HTTPS. Instead of local IP address, you will need to use a domain name and port 4000. Traffic will be forwarded to port 6000 of my Raspberry Pi, and you should see the same response. Let's review this network topology. Request is sent to my home, forwarded to the nginx proxy, then forwarded to Octoprint Assistant. It will communicate with Octoprint server, translate the response into English, and return it back. Next, I'm going to talk about the second way to generate SSL certificates. If you do not want to install certbots or other dependencies on your host, you can do that within the nginx docker container because it's pre-installed with certbot. So after starting the containers, you can first test it locally with HTTP protocol to make sure that Octoprint Assistant is working. Then on the server, you can run docker ps to get the container name. It should be Octoprint Assistant reverse proxy 1. Execute the bash shell of this container. Once you're in the bash shell, you can run the certbot command to generate SSL certificates as usual. The certificates will be generated in this folder. Due to the volume mapping, it will be also saved to your host. Then you need to modify the nginx configuration file. You can just modify it on host because the volume maps the configuration file to the container. Update the server name, update the passes, and uncomment the SSL certificate lines. Then within the batch shell of the reverse proxy docker container, test the configuration and reload it. HTTPS should now work with the domain on port 4000. That's it for the second method of deployment with Docker Compose. The setup of Octoprint Assistant is finished, but we still have a final step, which is to create an Apple shortcut so that we can send web requests with Siri instead of Postman. So go to the shortcut app on your Mac, iPad, or iPhone. Give it a name. That's a command you will use with Siri. If the name is Octoprint status, it will say, hey Siri, Octoprint status. It shouldn't be tested here, it's not updated. The second step is to search for get contents of URL, drag it here, fill in the URL and header. Make sure HTTPS is used unless you are debugging. Make sure the correct method is used. It can be get request or post request, depending on what you want to do. So to get job status, you should be using get request. If you want to issue a command to start, cancel a job, then sh you should use post request. The full API documentation will be provided in the GitHub repo. The API documentation is written with Postman. And do not forget to add the XAPI key of Octoprint Assistant. Lastly, search for show result and drag it here. It will read the response from the previous component. So here's another example with post where it's trying to start a job and the message should be post request. Remember that all requests should have a trailing slash. There should be a slash at the end 
otherwise it may not work. That's just how I wrote it. So using this method, you need to create a new shortcut for every command you want to use. So for example, you need one to start, one to cancel, one to get the status, and much more. You need to create so many shortcuts for Siri, and that's really stupid. This is how I solve the problem. Siri will ask for the command, and I will be using if else condition to decide what request to send. For example, if the command begins with status, I will send to drop status. If the command begins with start, I will send drop start request. And since there's no else if, I have to use nested if and else, which is not very elegant. I don't know any other way to do this. I could use a bash script, but bash script won't run on my iPhone. So this is the only solution I can come up for now. I'm not familiar with Apple shortcuts, so if you have another more elegant solution, please let me know. I exported this shortcut as a file and uploaded to the GitHub repo so that you do not need to do this again. It's very time consuming. But don't forget to update the domain name, the port, and the XAPI key. This is the final product. Turn on the printer. OK, done. Octoprint. Yes. Connect. Connected. Octoprint. Yes. Start. Yes, Lord Hacker. Job started. Octoprint. Yes. Status. Dear Lord Hacker, I am printing. The file I am printing is C3 Pro Headphone Hanger Code. I have printed for zero seconds, and printing time left is 5 hours, 34 minutes. Octoprint. Yes. Cancel the job. Yes, Lord Hacker. Job canceled. Octoprint. Yes. Disconnect. Disconnected.